So in this video, we'll be going through problem one of the note packet. And in it, we have an airplane starting from rest. It's accelerating down the runway until it reaches a speed where it's able to take off. What we're asked to find is the acceleration and the takeoff speed of the airplane. So we're looking to find two quantities. So we can go in and write those down now so we don't forget. So we're looking for the acceleration. The acceleration is in units of meters per second squared. And we want to know the sign. So let's start by defining a coordinate system. So I'm going to choose to have the right be the positive x direction. That's just my choice. You can choose the left to be the positive x direction. It doesn't matter as long as you stay consistent with all your numbers. So if it's moving, if the airplane's moving to the right down the runway and it's accelerating, then we should expect a positive number as a result based off of our coordinate system. The other thing we're looking for is the takeoff speed. So keep in mind that speed and velocity are not the same. Since it's asking for the speed at the takeoff, that's the instantaneous speed. So all we need to do is just take the magnitude of the final velocity and that will give the speed. And so that's in units of meters per second. And we're moving to the right down the runway, so we would also expect a positive velocity as a result. So we have specified our coordinate system, so we can check that off. This is just, we're moving down a runway, so this is just in one dimension. And this is just a 1D kinematics problem. Kinematics. And that's section 2.5. Now that we've read the problem and we know what we're looking for, and we've specified our coordinate system, the next step is to draw a motion diagram for this particular problem. So the airplane starts from rest, so we'll put a dot. The airplane's moving to the right with a velocity and it's accelerating to the right. So since velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, we expect the airplane's velocity to increase. So for a motion diagram, if you have an increasing velocity, you expect to have an increasing spacing of the dots. So we're going to want to space our subsequent dot farther than the last one. And so it'll look something like this. So now we can start filling in the information that we're given in the problem. So going back up to the problem, we have an airplane starting from rest. So starting with this first dot here, this is our initial position. So we have it starting from rest. So V. 0x is equal to 0 meters per second. And let's go ahead and just call this position 0. So x0 is equal to 0 meters. So we know how long the runway is. So let's mark off our final position on the motion diagram. And so we know the final position is equal to 1721 meters. We already know that the final velocity or the magnitude of the final velocity is what we're looking for. So VF is unknown. The final velocity is unknown in this part. So we can fill that in. We know how long it takes for the airplane to go down the entire runway. So that spans this entire motion diagram. So the time that it takes is 32.8 seconds. And the other thing that we're looking for is the acceleration. And so the acceleration is happening over the span of this motion diagram. So we're just going to put that up here as well. And that's an unknown, so we put a question mark next to it. 
Now that we have a diagram for the problem and identified all the knowns and unknowns, we can move on to step two where we plan the solution. So based off of the information that we're given, we have two unknowns. So that means we're going to need two equations to solve for those two unknowns. So looking up at our kinematics equations up at the top, based off the information we have, we're going to use this top right equation to be able to solve for the acceleration to start. And then we're going to use this bottom left equation to solve for the final velocity once we solve for the acceleration. So writing those down here, we have x is equal to, the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half the acceleration multiplied by time squared. And then for the second equation, we have the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. So checking off what we know and question mark what we don't, we know the positions, we know the initial velocity, we know the time that it takes to get down the runway. We are looking for the acceleration, and again, we know the time. We are looking for the magnitude of the final velocity, so that's an unknown. We know the initial velocity. We are going to be solving for the acceleration, but that's still an unknown at this point. And then we already know the time. So the first two steps are the bulk of the problem. So that is, those are the hardest part of the problem, setting it up, identifying what all the information is and choosing the correct equations to be able to solve for the unknown. The third step is just carrying all this out. So it's really just the algebra. So we start from the equation given in the note packet. And we don't start from a manipulated equation. So we just copy that down. And now we just substitute in everything that we identified. So we know that the final position is 1,721 meters, initial position zero meters. This whole term goes to zero because the initial velocity is zero. And then we are looking for the acceleration and the time interval, 32.8 seconds squared. Now moving everything over, we are left with 1721 meters over 537.92 seconds squared. Solving for that gives 3.2 meters per second squared. This has the correct units because we we're expecting meters per second squared and the acceleration is positive as we predicted. So now moving to the second equation to solve for the speed, we have via the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. We are looking for the final velocity. So we know that the initial velocity is zero meters per second, plus the acceleration, which we just determined, 3.2 meters per second squared, and multiplied by the total time, which is 32.8 seconds. Simplifying, we can cross off units. So we're multiplying meters per second squared times seconds. So that drops and we are left with 1050 meters per second for a final velocity. Remember, we are looking for the takeoff speed. So we need to take the magnitude get takeoff speed. So our final answer is equal to, happens to be the same, 1050 meters per second. That's positive, so we know we're going to the right, so that checks out from the start. 
And that seems like a reasonable takeoff speed for an airplane. So just going through, we check that it's complete, the sign's correct, the units are good, meters per second for velocity, meters per second squared for acceleration, and they seem reasonable for an airplane taking off.